starting to understand um, just things that were wrong in my life and um, dealing with the, some things with myself, with family, and we were helping a family member, I'll just say that much, and um, that he said, I want you to, well, I didn't know it was God, I wasn't that close, but I was hearing things of, oh, we need a safe, I need a safe place, it'd be great to have a safe place for people to come, and, and it was more teenagers, and uh, for teenagers to come and seek help and seek healing. But of course, in that time, it was more counseling, but just a safe place that they could come and, and be loved and, and get help. And then when my marriage at that time uh, fell apart and kids were scattered, um, I moved back to Louisville and started my healing, continuing, and then just really, just God got a hold of me in a radical way and gave my life totally to Him and kept hearing the safe place, a safe place, and healing. I just pursued Him just with all that I could, all that I was, and um, to the best of my ability, you know, of course, making mistakes and, and learning and growing, and, and at that time, you know, just groups and uh, whatever group was there, whatever <laughs> means of help, I, I, I did it. And, and seeing that, that people and myself feel like, well, this is going to last, this is going to go on forever. And, um, but doing whatever means was available, you know, the counseling, the groups, and, and doing that. I was working at uh, the University of Louisville, and the calls would come, the calls would come for help. I was doing some groups uh, for women and with uh, abuse. I was doing some uh, group with depression at church. And, and then through those calls would come and I would just help uh, for the, the information, the revelation that I had, then I would help with that. And then that's when I started opening my house and people would, would come, they would stay forever long. So then, and that was 93, the calls increased, the people increased, and then I knew that I had to just quit. Uh, it was God. God said, you, I want you to start this ministry. I'd gone on a trip to Jamaica. And the min so the ministry began in 93, but then it was incorporated in 94. And people were living with me, my children. And it was for, you know, women of all sorts. And then about 2000 was when it really, it took a different turn. Um, I didn't have people in my home. I was going, the church was coming to me, meaning the ministry and it took a, a, a deeper and more uh, the spiritual, the, the gifts were exploding, you know, and so uh, being more revelated. Uh, in the mid-90s, I was more revelated with the gifts of the Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, uh, the power anointing, which helps, of course, tremendously. And so learning about strongholds and lies and curses and, and just how people can be trapped in, the, in what they're struggling with. You come in with some expectations. You come in with certain things that you've been struggling with. And uh, all of us that follow the Lord, we always know that there's something, a little rock or something holding that bad foundation <laughs> in place, um, you know, strongholds or whatever. And um, so you come in and just tell Lisa or whoever is um, going to be running your session at that point what what you're hitting. And they've already been praying for you, like I said, from about 4 o'clock in the morning on. So the, the Lord's already been talking to them. And the Lord may address that issue at that point, or he may look at something else that's contributing to that. Uh, for a lot of people, uh, fear is a big issue, but anger is the way it, it demonstrates itself or manifests itself, but actually the, the core issue is fear. So the Lord may work on fear just to get rid of anger. <laughs> One of mine instantly that I've been thinking of was uh, the fact that you do not have to be crippled, maimed, or driven into bankruptcy to be shown that God loves you. Did you think that to really experience intimacy with God, something drastic would have to happen? Yes. Yeah, I, I thought it was just part of the deal. Uh, that, yeah, you had to get beaten down as low as you could go uh, and have to 
go through all kinds of hell to find out that God loved you. So finding out that's not true must have severely changed your image of God. Uh, yes. Uh, at that point during the healing, I remember it helped me focus more on obedience rather than sitting there uh, almost rigid and paralyzed ready for to get hit and hurt. One of the things for me was um, it opened my eyes to see how I relate to others and how I interact with others, especially with Brian. Um, whenever we argued um, or had a disagreement, it opened my eyes to see, um, you know, just how I reacted to him and how I treated him and um, you know, not just not really, I don't want to say not fighting fair, but um, holding a lot of grudges against him and trying to get even with him. Whenever there's a problem, uh, I think it gets nipped in. We go for forgiveness real quick. Real and we quick. own, we take, immediately we take responsibility for our own actions and the part that we played. Um, what made it stand out? as a place of healing for me when I came was just safety. I felt safe um, right off the bat. The atmosphere when I walked in, I could feel the presence of the Lord here. Um, I wasn't able to talk to a lot of people about some internal battles that were going on, but when I got here, it was just different. Um, the people were just loving and caring, and when I read in the Bible about God not being a respect of person, that's what I feel here, is that there's all types of people coming in from different walks of life, races and all that, and it doesn't matter. Um, I just feel love here. And that was my main thing, is that um, going through so many struggles and stuff, I just wanted to be loved, and I find it here. I, f I feel safe. Um, the impact that it's had, um, on me um, with the Lord is that I didn't really, I knew of God, but I really didn't like know Him, know Him. And I feel that coming to Wings um, has really drawn me in to want more and more of Him because right off, like the first session, I felt like I had gotten a breakthrough and that just made me want to keep coming back because I want the total healing. Um, I want to know the fullness of walking in this Christian walk and not just accepting Him as my Lord and Savior. Because although I did that, there was still turmoil going on on the inside and um, just hurt. And I didn't know how to do deal with that. Um, I didn't really have the knowledge. I didn't even know that I could be healed of that. And, um, coming here, it's just like every time I come, there's something being broken off. Fear is one of those that was a, a stronghold, you know, and I, I knew that I was fearful ever since I was a little girl. I just, you know, I, I struggled with fear. And so I knew that and I had dealt with it at different times in my life and felt like I had made some great strides, some real victory in that. But mid-December, I was diagnosed with lung cancer that had spread to the brain. And stage four, doctors didn't give a lot of hope. And so I, that old fear just kind of rose up as much as I, the anchor held. You know, I say the, the, the feelings fluctuate, but the anchor holds. You know, the faith is there and God is good and he takes good care of us, you know, through the hardest times. But I, the enemy was having a heyday with the fear. And I knew I needed to get some help because Christ, Galatians 5 1 says he came and it's a done deal. He came so that we could be free. And I wasn't free. I was all bound up in fear. And by coming to Wings, you know, the folks with the gift of discernment in the spirit were able to just identify and help me get to the root where I've really been able to gain victory over fear. And that's huge. That's huge under any circumstances, but for me right now, that's, that's major. How has this affected your health? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, the doctors use everything short of the word miracle. They just, um, 
they've been amazed at the progress that has that God the things that God has gotten done. Of course, they don't they don't attribute it to the Lord. They attribute it to medicine and lots of other things, which is that's fine. We're you know um, we know that God has given them gifts and He's using them, but they have even been able to see the hand of God at work and no other good explanation other than God working. Yeah. Twenty some years ago, well, back up. I came to Christ as a child and just fell in love with Jesus and he is my best friend and and then I grew up a little bit and life hit you know and and you kind of I had this impression nobody really gave it to me but I just was under the assumption that if you had Jesus everything would go great for the whole rest of your life and it didn't and when the bottom fell out I grew very angry with God and uh, kind of fists up kind of thing and you know what his love won me over he stuck with me and he pursued me and I became a God seeker and just sought after God. And so I, I, I have enjoyed an intimacy with Him and a love relationship with Him. But because of the fear and the unbelief and some of the strongholds that were still in my life, there was a blockage to even allowing God to love me like He wants to love me. And so through prayer times at Wings, I have just experienced what I thought was intimacy with the Lord, a whole new level of intimacy and learning. I'm not, I'm just learning, learning about all of this, you know, how, how to really walk in the Spirit and allow the Lord free access, vulnerability, complete dependence upon Him, and and I am a novice, I am I'm learning, but He's so faithful to walk me along in that. So there, I think there's definitely a new level of trust and intimacy in our relationship. Well, an ungodly belief, how you could be stuck is if you feel rejected and you believe that you, you don't feel like that you feel like it's a truth you feel like you are not wanted you feel like you are rejected by the church or by your family or by the world you might not say oh I'm rejected you just feel it you sense it wherever you go and as you're stuck in that then that becomes a truth and you're just stuck in that and so your life becomes like a series of events of rejection and so it ends up and at some, at some point in your life, it became a stronghold. And that could have been a curse in your family. And so what we do is just look at that and pray over that and to remove that lie, to forgive the people that you need to forgive, to ask the Holy Spirit to tear down that stronghold through forgiveness and through anything that you might need to repent of and things that you are still, it's still, things you're still in agreement with. They've taught me to look at what I'm thinking, look at the Word of God and see if my thinking is lining up with what God's Word says or or am I believing a lie. And in some instances, I had just grown up believing lies. The ungodly belief of this, that He wasn't there and was when I was little, um, and so she asked me to go back into that room where I was. And she said, where was God with you in that room? And so we went back to my room that when I was a little girl. And I can see it just as plain as day that the white walls and all the sunshine. And she said, and where is God in that room? And I said, he's everywhere. You know, it wasn't that he was gone, he was everywhere. But the fear that I'd always had had told me that he wasn't there and that he didn't care about me. Um, and you went back and looked at that room and I mean that room, the sun shines through that window and just illuminates everything. And there wasn't a spot in that room that I could even think of that he wasn't in. What has surprised you the most about being there? One thing is the love. There's so much love. The love of God is there, real strong. How would you say this is a, has affected you, maybe in areas of of fear or anxiety in your life? Uh, it's, it's helped me a lot, you know, because a lot of the fear and anxiety was because I was doubting my right standing with the Lord, you know, and now I, you know, I know His love because that's, you know, perfect love casts out fear. And that's what it's about there, is that love. Knowing his love, you know, that helps me overcome anxiety and fear. 
If you could say anything to Lisa Marie as this is their 20th anniversary, what would you want to say to her? What would I say? Uh, God bless you and, and thank you for being obedient and committed to the Lord, you know, because, you know, the wings was there for me. I just actually, I came to see if um, they could teach me something about deliverance so I could do it in my women's ministry. So it's like, and also that I'm back in the back of my mind was if anything's wrong with me, air quotes. So, so how's that turn out? Um, it turned out there's a lot wrong. <laughs> 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 there's a lot that needs fixing. So things have manifested in um, lots of pain and um, things came out that I didn't realize that were still there. I mm -hmm. thought it was delivered of those feelings. And, you know, I've done so much ministry outward to other women thinking I was delivered and maybe I was just stuffing things down more and I thought I had dealt with all those feelings and I didn't and so they just get down to the the specifics of what it is that's bothering you. Performance has been huge. Um, performance I think was one of the first things we talked about and um, performance for me looked like a um, I think it was like a hot air balloon and she said it was kind of like wrapped around my arms and I was holding on so tight, a hot air balloon. And I had big sacks holding me down and I was holding on so tight for that performance. I um, I thought, I always thought I knew God and I've known God 20 years, I thought. <laughs> I've heard his voice and, but I don't think I really knew him. And one day I was, I was talking to a pastor uh, a woman who's known who's been ministering 47 years and she said Evie you know I just uh, I realized I don't really know God and I was like you know I, I've been finding out you know from here that I don't really know him either and when I went to communion um, I, I uh, saw the Lord on the throne and I kept trying to mm -hmm. jump up onto his lap and I kept trying to uh, jump onto his lap but it just kept falling off and I kept, you know, wondering why, you know, but it wasn't him that was, you know, it wasn't him that was pushing me off. It was me pushing myself off because of other past hurts and things. And so I'm crying because, you know, I've always wanted that relationship so badly with the Father. So um, I'm so happy that, you know, the Lord's drawing me in. So the next time with communion, um, the Lord came and he, he bent down to me and he he held my hand and he said come on and I said okay Lord and he held my hand and he brought me to the to uh, the throne room and um, and I think that's what I remember he turned and he held me and he said it's okay and then the third time he brought me to the table with the Lord and he sat me down and and we sat at the table like you know introducing me to his father and so that was just precious to me and so since then it's just been a whole different relationship. I didn't realize how deep some of my hurts were and some of the, the things that had happened to me, whether significant or insignificant, but how much it had really impacted my life. And until I went back and relived it and faced it and dealt with it and really gave that over to the Lord, um, it wasn't until I was able to let go of those things and really give those things up that I was able to get the healing that I needed. For myself, I had to uh, dig down deep and, and a lot of things were uncovered and, and the Lord revealed a lot of things to me uh, as I was in these ses sessions and even after the sessions um, over the days that followed, um, you know, and, and my time with the Lord really revealing things to me and, and uncovering a lot of my hurts and exposing a lot of things. But uh, through that exposure, uh, really bringing healing to to myself and uh, and even to my girls in, in some aspects. If you could just say a word to Lisa Marie, what would you say? Um, Just, I, I don't 
I'm not getting teary eyed. It's okay. <laughs> um, thanks for loving on me and uh, and my girls um, through what has been the hardest point ever in my life and um, I'm grateful for it um, and I know my girls are and they look forward to coming and they every time they come uh, they walk away and, and they are excited that they had been here and uh, so um, thanks for loving on me and, and especially loving on them. First and foremost, Wings is a safe, 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 safe place uh, to heal. Um, Elise Marie had, of course, along with God, uh, the Holy Spirit, has cultivated such an atmosphere of safety um, that that's the number one thing that I think of. And it's a place where you, even those who aren't vulnerable can allow themselves to be. I know when I first started coming here, I was so closed up. Um, my heart was encased. I don't know how many, <laughs> how many encasements came off of my heart. Um, I couldn't cry anymore. Um, I cried so much that I, I thought I had dried up. <laughs> but I hadn't dried up. I had just walled off the water. Um, and tears just couldn't fall anymore. Uh, but thank God for her patience. Uh, she, you know, just let God work and she waited. The first time I heard Lisa Marie say, just give God your yes. I was like, oh, that's a different thought. <laughs> but it's, oh, it's just, where's your agreement? Who are you agreeing with? And whose land are you standing on? I think probably the greatest enemy of a believer is unbelief. And following right behind that would be deception, self-deception. Because the enemy can only still kill and destroy. So he's going to do his best to keep you just in that fog. But as intercessors or prayer warriors more than anything, uh, just asking God for his heart for those that are coming through the doors. You know, if they're clients or if they're just people that, that come into the prayer room, if it's just somebody that calls on the phone, um, we have individuals that call from across the United States, you know, looking for a place. And so it's like, okay, God, what's your heart for these people? What do you say, God? You know, what is your prophetic heart? How's it beating for them? And what are you saying? And it's like, okay, so, you know, just show us. You know, we ask for open heavens. We ask for that, that portal just to open up and for that presence to fall. It's the 20th anniversary. What would you want to say to Lisa Marie? Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for giving God your yes never taking it back and for never looking back. Thank you for every early morning, for all the prayers, for all the intercession, for not only for myself but for my family. listening to God and getting that prophetic heart for each person that walks through that door to say thank you to not only Lisa Marie but to Andrea and Robbie in those early early days thank you for sharing your mom and your home oh, and for Dale oh my goodness thank you for your heart for your 
loving, sharing heart. And for Sharon Lisa Marie, thank you for cultivating an atmosphere of honor. For cultivating a place of worship. A place where people can just come and be with God. But at the same time, a place of Fun, a place where people know they can rest. For working with God to create 